Hello, I'm back and for my first video I will be doing Faker. Faker is a library in Python that allows you to create fake data out of nothing. This is particularly useful for the people out there who don't have data to work with and play with. Um, or maybe you only have numbers and you want to play with text. You can do it this way. So Faker will allow us to generate this and then you can start playing around with all the amazing tools that are available to us through pandas and python. So let's get into this. Okay, so as I said, we're creating a toy data set. Um, we're going to create profiles using Faker and then we're going to create a couple of other functions which then generate random numbers against particular uh, column types and then we're going to take all that data and join it together and then you have a data set for playing with. Now, Important point, this data set isn't going to draw any real conclusions because it's random data, but it will give you a chance to play with the tools. And that's what this is all about, practice. So the data is going to be made up of these um, columns, essentially. So we're going to have screen views, we're going to have timestamp, we're going to have uh, user IDs because that will allow us to join the data together at the end. The user IDs will come out of the faker data. Um, and we're going to have app events and so maybe that's a click rather than a, a screen view and then we're going to have purchases so that's the sort of data we're making first thing we need to do is import our libraries if you haven't got faker installed and you don't know how to install packages head over to the youtube channel go to playlists for setup and near the end of those videos you will see how to install packages so we've got faker, pandas, random. This is going to allow us to generate the random numbers and date time. This will allow us to generate the timestamps. First thing we need to do is initiate the faker library. So fake equals faker. And that just calls a faker method. And the first function we're going to build is making the profiles. Uh, firstly, we have a make profile. So we have a variable called X and a variable called Y. X is the random seed, and we'll talk about that in a second. Y is the number of profiles you want to create. So you could create millions. We're only going to create 5,000 here. Um, important point for each function that are built, um, you're going to have to have the same amount of profiles created. So let's talk about the fake random seed. So fake, whoop, that's not fake, fake dot simple profile. If we run this, it will give us a simple, it will give us a dictionary because of the curly brackets with um, profile information. Now, if you just check this email address, if I run this again, that email address will change and it will keep changing. Unless I put in fake.seed and then give it, call it 10, right? We can put any number in there, Ooh, seed. And we run that. And we've got brand I young. Run it again. Same one. So you see what it does? It, it sticks the start point at a particular location. So no matter how many times you run that function, it will start from the same point. This is important so you don't end up with really random data that you can't use. So dump that. So we're going to set the, uh, the, the seed number as X. And you can see that in here. Then we're going to create a variable uh, which is a pandas data frame and we're going to take the fake simple profile the method that gave us a dictionary and we're going to run a for loop over it right so this is a list comprehension if you see a for loop in a straight line it's list comprehension provided it's followed with the square brackets so it, essentially this method for this method or this method for i so it's index so if you're going through the index, looking through, in range of y, y is the amount of profiles. So essentially what this is saying is, keep looping over this and adding, like sequentially, um, until you get to 5,000. And then store it in this data frame called profiles. And we're gonna have profiles created, and that's a variable that has a date timestamp so that, that basically says the profile was created at this time. Then profiles.index, uh, we're going to have the index as the mail column or 
the mail part a key in the dictionary, um, which is the email address. And then for some reason I couldn't quite understand, and I thought this was the easiest way to deal with it, we kept having an index of mail and the column mail, it didn't replace it. So um, I basically dropped mail after I set it as an index. And then what I want to do is return profiles. So return this data frame with all this work on it. Next thing we need to do after we've run that is create profiles as a variable. And that is essentially the output of this function that we've written where I've set the seed as 9393 and the amount of profiles we're going to create is 5,000. So if we run that just now, so it'll take a couple of seconds to roll. There we go, run ahead. There we go. We have a data frame with a bunch of random data in it. Next up, we're going to create a time variable. So this is the time variable that we'll use as a timestamp in all of the other data. And this function that we've built is called make screens because we essentially want to build um, screens with like screen views with like screen view one, screen view two, and then like a random number next to it. And how we do this is similar to what we did above, but instead of grabbing the data out of the, the faker simple profile, we're going to create our own dictionary. And the dictionary will um, basically have like screen view timestamp, which is the time variable that we created here. Then screen view one, which is random dot random int. So that's that random um, module that we imported. And then one of the methods of that is rand dot int, so random integer essential, essentially. And that is between one and a hundred thousand. So you put the range essentially is here. And we've done that five times. And then we're using the exact same for loop to loop over those. So we can then put them into a, a data frame. And then the index for the data frame, so screens.index equals profile.index is actually the index from the profiles that we created above because we want to grab this mail column or the index column and use it here so we can join the data later on. So if we run that, and we're returning screen, so we're returning this data frame. And we're creating another variable of the function with 5,000 profiles because this time we only have um, one element that we need to plumb in. That ran very quickly, there we go. See how it works here, see what we're doing. We've got the index here, the index up here, and then the different types of data running across the sites. Everything has a timestamp. And we're going to essentially do the, the exact same thing for events. So it's the same principle entirely, it's just we're calling it events this time. And we run that, we get ahead, there's the event data, timestamps too. Um, and then purchases, the exact same again, just with, uh, we're gonna get less columns output. So if we run that, 5,000 again, run it. So essentially now we have three data sets and a profile to go with each data set. And we want to join them all together because imagine we're doing machine learning or something like that or we want to do data analysis of different behavior or user flows. Um, we want to join them together. And the easiest way to do this in pa uh, Pandas right now or Python is to use a function called join. Join is getting uh, depreciated at some point quite soon and merge will become the primary method. But join is really easy and for this tutorial, presuming that everybody is beginners, we're gonna use join because you, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You don't really need to think about it. So we're going to create a variable called full data and full data equals profiles. So we created profiles up here and then join dot join to screens or screen joins to profile and then join events to screens and profiles and then join purchases to event screens and profiles. Now, because we have index set already, Join automatically just uses the index, but sometimes you're gonna to have to specify if you don't have an index, what, where the join is gonna be. That being said, we run this. See how quickly that, that worked? Imagine doing that in Excel. And we're gonna go full data dot head. And there 
is our data set. All of them joined together, all timestamps, all starting, well, it's actually re-indexed, so we won't be able to see it. Um, but you'll see here that all the email addresses are the same, so we know Seeds is working. And if you want to save this, it's really simple. Full data dot to CSV command. Save dot CSV. Oh, that is because I wrote it incorrectly. There you go, saved. We jump in here, save data set. Da, 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 da. There you go. So that is how you create a really simple data set. I mean, there's, you won't be able to use that data set for anything. You're not going to be able to predict anything with it or draw any charts that make any sense. It's purely just to practice using um, the Panda tools in Python. For example, maybe you want to break up the timestamp. You've got a timestamp there that you can split into like, you know, a time, um, a seconds column or a minutes column or whatever. Um, maybe you want to do some text analysis and break that address out. Maybe you want to convert this timestamp to a timestamp similar to that. Uh, maybe you want to do a bit of analysis on, on email address type. This will help you do, play with those skills that you can then take into your work after. So hopefully this was helpful. It was my intention. Um, I'm working on another series similar to the, the Python 3030 challenge in the sort of whole bunch of videos released um, one day after the other essentially for a period of time. I will give you guys an update on that once I'm sure of what the content's going to be. Anyway, ciao for now.